all of the names that you use in Scala, whether they be for variables or methods or objects or classes, have to be declared. And as a result, the concept of how you declare things and the scope of declarations becomes very significant. So I want to explore that a little bit in this video, mainly because if you are coming from a Python world, scope rules are quite a bit different. In Python, you actually don't declare variables, you just start using them. And so it's important to understand the differences. The scoping rules in Scala are very similar to ones in Java, so someone coming from a Java background would find these to be quite natural. First off, scopes in Scala are defined by curly braces. So you've probably noticed that I put curly braces around blocks of code. We have one for the entire object that gets closed off at the very bottom of the file. We have another set of curly braces that includes everything inside of main. You might have noticed that the age that I declare up here, I use down inside of here. Um, so you know, we've given some indications of how scope works in Scala. First, let's talk about declarations. You have actually seen four types of declarations, and every declaration in Scala has a keyword that goes with it. We have an object declaration, we have val, we have var, and we have seen def. And so val and var are used to declare variables, def is used to declare methods. In addition to object, we can declare types with class and trait. We'll get to those, then the usage of those later. You can also uh, declare types using the type declaration, which really allows you to just provide a different name for a particular type. Those are the declarations that you get in Scala, and as with the ones that we've seen, you always start off with the keyword for the declaration, followed by the name of the declaration, and then things after that vary a little bit depending upon what it is that you are declaring. So after you declare something though, it can only live for a certain section of your program, and basically it lives from the point of declaration. So for example, this T, I can't use T up here. He doesn't exist up here. If I were to try to do something like this, print line t, you see that, actually this one's, this one's weird though, this actually, here we get a warning because I'm inside of the object reference to uninitialized value t. If I do this inside of main, let's say I have my var i right there, let's try to print line i. I can't. Okay, and so here it's not just a warning, here it's actually an, an error. Uh, forward reference extends over definition of variable i. Okay, so basically that's telling you you can't use this i because this i only exists from the point of declaration until the end of the curly braces that it appears inside of. So these curly braces end right down there, and I can use that value of i anywhere inside of there but not before the declaration, and I also can't use it outside. So for example, out here, I don't believe I have a variable i that's inside a scope, so that doesn't work. Arguments to functions have a scope that goes through the entire uh, function or method, so args can be used anywhere inside of these curly braces. I cannot use it out here. It doesn't exist there, okay? When I put a declaration, for example, inside of a for loop, turns out this i is not the same as this i. It is hiding it and it has a smaller scope. You can also tell the color coding. Uh, Eclipse is telling you that this i is a val because it is blue, and I use it there and there. The i for a for loop like this exists inside of the body of the loop. Similarly here I declared an i and a j and they exist inside of the body of the loop. You'll note that I'm able, to, they also exist in the subsequent lines of the um, top part of the for loop so I'm using i inside of here. Once again I could not have used i on the line prior to the generator that declared that variable. You are allowed to nest 
pretty much anything you want in Scala. And also you can create little scopes for just by putting in curly braces. Uh, every so often I will have something where I say val um, and I will put a set of curly braces here. First off, the curly braces itself is an expression. It has the value of the last thing there. So if I print line and then I say five, well the value of thing will be five. When I run this it would print the statement or print print the, the string in the block and then it would give back this five and store that in thing. If I declare a variable inside of here and the, we can even return that but the scope of this declaration, this val, is inside of these curly braces and it can only be used to there. And so if I come out here and I try to print thing2, we're going to get a syntax error. Well, and I have a typo. Even if I don't have a typo, we're still going to get a syntax error because this thing2 only has a scope inside of these curly braces and so it ceases to exist right there and I can't use it outside of that. Okay, so. That's a quick introduction to the scoping rules inside of Scala and the different declarations that you can create. We will see a lot more details of some of these declarations that we haven't really talked about much in later videos.